Defense, he's peeping up your first I'd like to bring Richard Blanc to this hand. There he is. <laughs> do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, Hitech High? I do. Uh, please state your name. Richard C. Blum. What is your current occupation right now? I am on the board of the UC Regents along with 17 others. What does that entail? That entails overseeing, governing, and organizing the Universities of California. Do you believe the UCs are offering everyone a chance to higher education? I do. I think, well, UCs are all about qualifications. The qualifications to get into a university within California does not entail anything that involves your income, your race, your gender, your sexual preference. I mean, it's allowing everyone to get into these schools, and it's, allow it's allowing financial aid and scholarships. I think it's just a power of will to get into a UC school. I'd like to bring evidence A. Could you, do you recognize this graph? I do. Can you please state what you think about the graph? Um, the graph is showing the differentiating incomes that are coming into, from ad, undergraduates into a UC, and it's not showing any big preference towards any income. So you're saying UC Berkeley, UCSD, UCLA, and all the other UC schools together are very diversely economic because they come from low income, high income, and it doesn't really matter? Yes. Okay. Uh, how does this pertain to your case and your expert opinion? Um, the case is violating the American dream. I think if, it's, if different students are coming from different incomes, then it's not it's not a case of whether it's violating the American dream. I think it's a case of whether you want to go to a UC. I mean, UCs depend on GPA qualifications. I mean, essays that you include within your application. I think that it doesn't, having these income distributions, it's, it's supporting the idea that everyone can go to a UC and it's not just the wealthy or the middle class. Are you familiar with the California Master Plan? I am. Okay. I'd like to show evidence B. This is a section from the California Master Plan. Can you please read what it states? Access and differentiation of admission pools establish the principle of universal access and choice and differentiation of admissions pools for the segments. UC was to select from among the top one-eighth, 12.5% of the high school graduating class, CSU was to select among the top one-third, 33.3% of the high school graduating class, and California community colleges were to admit any student capable of benefiting from instruction. So anybody is allowed to go to college, any level of college in California? Anyone can. Okay, I'd like to present evidence C. This is another part of the California Master Plan. Just summarize what it states. It's saying California, California community colleges educate 70% of our state nurses. California community colleges train 80% of firefighters, law enforcement personnel, and emergency medical technicians. 28% of University of California and 55% of California State University graduates started at a California community college. Transfer students from California community colleges to the University of California system currently account for 48% of the UC's bachelor degrees in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Community colleges offer associate degrees and short-term job training certificates in more than 175 fields and approximately 25,000 apprentices are educated each year to meet the demand for a skilled workforce. Nearly 50% of all California veterans receiving GI educational benefits attend the California Community College for workforce training, turn an associate degree, or to work toward transferring to a four-year university. Dennis, could I ask you to scoot over in the way the camera for the oh, witness? Sorry. Thank you. Okay, in your expert opinion, do you believe that community college is sufficient education? That's not my area of expertise. I'm on the board of UC, not the board of community colleges. Okay, do you, Richard Blum, as the board member of the UC Regents, believe that sufficient higher education is possible for everyone? Yes, 
it's possible it's possible for people who are willing to take that extra step to get their GPAs up and and get financial aid and apply for scholarships it's possible for anyone to go to a UC um, 65% of four-year graduates coming from UCs are in debt because of student loan and financial aid. It's not like people going to UCs already have their money laid out on hand. It's basically what you're willing to do to get there. Okay, thank you. Prosecution, would you like to cross-examine? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, can you tell me what the requirements are to get into a UC school? Be the top 12.5% of your graduating class. That's the only requirement? I mean, there are other requirements, but there are different requirements for different schools. Those differentiate. Uh, do you think... Oh, okay. Do you think everyone meets the requirements to get into a UC school? Everyone can meet the requirements to get into a UC school. So... Um, you actually, I'm going to start with that. You mentioned before that you said that GPA and essays are requirements. I mean, you have to have a certain GPA to qualify to get into a UC, and depending how, <laughs> depending on, I mean, your admissions essay, there's, there's things that you are able to change in order to get into a University of California. You're saying anyone can get into the UC? Uh, schools, uh, don't A to G requirements make account for that? Don't what? Don't they like, you're saying, you, you said everyone can get into the UC system, but what about the A to G requirements? What is an A to G requirement? The what? requirements you have to get in high Here's school. Here's a, a evidence yeah. of the A to G requirements, that's just in general. Uh, those are what the requirements are. And is it true that you need to meet these requirements to get into your school? I don't believe so. I mean, High Tech High doesn't offer visual or performing arts. <laughs> we don't, do we? Do we? Think you need to we get some media. Facts. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Whatever you so, if students, if high schools aren't performing uh, well enough to get those requirements to every high school and make them available to every student in California, how is it that you say that anyone can get accepted? If they don't meet the requirements, how are they going to get accepted to your school? If they don't meet the credits yeah, or complete those, what high schools aren't offering those? No, it's not that they aren't offering. I, I thought you, okay. Um, a to Z requirements, I, I figured you would know this from your own uh, system. That, okay, first, first of all, that's not the system. There's three separate systems that I'm in charge of. There's the Board of Trustees that are in charge of the CSUs, the Board of Governors in charge of, in charge of community colleges, and the Board of Regents in charge of, in charge of the UC system. I have nothing to do with high school subject or requirements yes. or credit. Yes, I understand that. But you said you are in charge of the UC system, right? I'm not in charge of the UC system. What are you in charge of? Seven, I, what are you in charge of? I oversee and govern different, community, different committees that are involved in the UC system. There are 10 committees all together. I'm not in charge of all 10 committees. There are 17 others that handle that, handle that and two others that govern about four committee, committees along with me. This is not within my range of expertise. High school requirements to get into your schools, the schools that you help manage, you need to meet these requirements to even uh, send an application. So how, are, how is every student, how is it possible for every student to get these, to get into your schools if they don't even meet those requirements? If the schools that they go to, the high school that they go to, don't give these uh, classes to everyone? I mean, if they don't offer those classes, is it impossible for the student to transfer high schools? If they really want to get into college, oh, really want to meet those requirements? Point. So how is it? If everyone doesn't have the right amount of education for college, every high school student doesn't have the knowledge they need to uh, be successful in college to go to the right college, how are they supposed to do that? You're saying if they don't have that? Yes, if they don't have assistance in getting into college, if they don't have guidance, if they don't have, uh, not if the college advisors don't get to them, how are they supposed to know the requirements for your schools, the schools you help manage? 
why wouldn't they look up the requirements if they want to go to UC? I mean, if they want to go to a University of California, why wouldn't they look up the, the requirements and take the initiative to speak to a college advisor or to transfer high schools if they're not getting the proper education? So students need to know everything about the college they're about to apply to, even when they have no guidance from uh, their high school advisor, their college advisors from their high school. Objection, argumentative. Do you think that was argumentative or do you think that was a question? Uh, I think overruled. What was the question again? So how are students supposed to get in if they don't have the guidance of college? Like, if they don't know what they need to get in, how to get into the colleges, how are they supposed to do it? Okay, for me, basically, since I am on the UC Regents Board, and I am not in charge of the Board of Education that governs high schools or organizes high schools, all I have to say is, if a student has the willpower, and if they really want to get to college, they're going to get information on that college, or UC, they're going to talk to someone about that, and if it's really that important to them to meet those requirements, they might take the extra classes, or they might transfer high schools. I, don't, I can't speak for students that want to stay in a high school that's not offering them proper education. That want to stay in the high school? I mean, what if you want to stay in the high school, or you want to go to college? Okay, so would it be easier for someone with an economical advantage to, know the, to even know that these requirements exist? Uh, let's, just a scenario, uh, what if a, a student has an after school job to help their family? What if they have siblings to take care of? What would they do? Since they don't, not only do they not have the money, but they don't have the guidance to get into the colleges they would like to, what do they do? As a management of the UC schools, can you just elaborate on what is it that they would do uh, in that situation? If they had what would you recommend commitments to yes. afterwards and they did not know, yes. first thing I would recommend is know the UC system. Know what you need to do to get into a University of California and then take the extra steps to achieve those, I don't know, those qualifications. Well, can you read off the energy requirements? What are they? Oh, I take them back. Subject, history and social science, science include one year of U.S. history or one semester of U.S. history and one semester of civics or American government and one year of social science. Years completed two. English, four years of college preparatory English composition and literature. Math, four years recommended include algebra one, geometry, algebra two or higher mathematics take one year. Um, laboratory science include one bio biological class, science and one physical science. Language other than English, two years of the same language, American Sign Language is applicable. See below about a possible waiver of this requirement. Visual and performing arts, dance, drama, theater, music, or visual art, um, college preparatory elective, additional year chosen from the University of California, A through G list. Now, is that something average student would even ask that they need to know to go to colleges. If a student is doing their best and they're performing, let's say a student is getting straight A's, but they're not even in those classes, what are they to do? They're not going to qualify for your uh, program, for the UC system, so what do they do then? I mean, it, <laughs> if they want to get informed about the University of California system and the requirements, they, maybe they should talk to their parents, they should talk uh, to an advisor, maybe a teacher, about looking for other schools that offer that type, those type of courses. So well, without, are you saying that without even knowing these courses existed, they should still... Uh, objection. There it is. The question asks the witness to relate to a story rather than state-specific facts. The past like three questions were hypothetical. Yeah, sustained. I have uh, evidence, I'd like to hand you evidence. This is from a, a master plan uh, that you guys have. Can you go to the second page? What are the threats that you had when you uh, formed this plan? Can you read it off of your own plan? Social and economic changes, greater demand for higher education, increasingly global economy, more diverse society, 
demogra demographic challenges, issue of access, differential participation rates, ethnic racial diversity not keeping pace. Declining state financial support, preserving affordability, proposals to change or abolish master plan coordinating agency, maintaining mission distinctions, transfer and joint doctoral programs require coordination across segments. And those are all labeled under what? Under the master plan challenges and threats. Okay, since so uh, what year was this plan formed? It was formed in the 1950s, but you're handing me documents from 1960 through 1960. Uh, those are updated versions of, made, they were made into PowerPoints, if, if you would know that you presented those. They're off your website. When did I present these? You would know if you're Richard Blum. You are Richard Blum, right? <laughs> okay, so since you want to bring up the master plan. Yes, actually, I'm bringing up evidence, and I'm, I want you to talk about the threats that you said right here. Um, one that you mentioned as a threat is issue of access. You, a greater demand for higher education. What would you say that that would be? What is a greater demand for higher education? Is that more people? What, what is that? More people want to, accept, want to access higher education. Okay, so you predicted this, uh, this to be a problem, this to be a threat. Is that right? Is that, is that I didn't write the master plan. But you are standing for it. Yes. Okay, so this was a threat of the original plan. How did you guys, overcome that threat? How did you um, not let that slow you down? How did you, you know, oh, yeah, how did you overcome this threat? What did you do so that this didn't affect people getting into your system? The threat of greater, of demand of higher education? Yeah, so more people go, more people applying to your schools. Well, since this paper says through 1975, mm -hmm. I should mention that in 1980, of course, they caught off, okay, until from 1960 to 1975, they had a no tuition policy, right? They cut off that policy in 1980 to raise tuition for teaching other than dormitories and textbooks. But with that tuition, they also substantially raised financial aid applications. I mean... Oh, then how many people um, were accepted for financial aid? How many, how many qualified for financial How many students? How many students qualify for financial aid? Yeah, on average, just how many students qualify for financial aid? That's not my expertise within the UC Regents. So you're board. mentioning it. I'm mentioning it, but that's not my expertise. But so if you write something you're not an expert of. I didn't write... Hmm? Okay. Well, you stick to defend it. I didn't write the master plan. Okay, I know you didn't. Sorry for my... Um, <laughs> uh, what did you... How did, how did you guys overcome that problem? How do we higher ed of a, a greater demand. demand for education. Oh, well, what are you considering higher education? Okay, higher education is okay, community colleges. This is calling for a conclusion rather than the facts. Her opinion of her, sorry, her, her opinion of concluding this, like how we overcame it, is just an opinion that won't be a fact. Your Honor, I'm asking how they overcame it. That should be a fact since it was written uh, many years ago. Just because it's written doesn't mean it's going to be an opinion, a fact considered an opinion. So you're wondering. You're wondering how the, the people overcame. Yeah, since it was a plan, and that was, that was a long opinion. time ago. Thank you. Yeah. Opinion, what did they do to put in place? <laughs> what? I, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Are you considering community colleges to be part of higher education? Yes. Are you considering CSUs? Yes. And USCs? Yes. Anyone can go to a community college. What about the people who don't meet the AG requirements for? You mean people who don't get a GED? AG you have to have a GED to get into community colleges. You're talking about UCs. Yes. Okay. And you said you consider community colleges a form of higher education. Yes, they are a form of education. So, again, how many scholarships are given? How many? Uh, how much financial aid is given to a student on average? I'm not the president of the scholarship federation. You're asking me the wrong questions. You said you're asking you're me for numbers up, that I'm not qualified to answer. What are you answer. saying? What are you bringing up uh, to the answer of my question? I'm bringing up what do you consider higher education. If you're considering community colleges and CSUs, anyone can qualify if they want to get a higher education to go to a community colleges. Okay, and since you're bringing up community colleges, I am bringing up how community colleges are overpopulated and how are they supposed to- You never to mentioned overpopulation of community colleges. Okay, I'm sorry. How do uh, each, how do these students get help to even stay in community college? 
If you know that there's so many people there, you should also know that people are struggling in community college because they can't even afford that. You should also know I'm not on the board for community colleges. I'm on the board for UC. I, then I don't understand what you're saying when you say that uh, people can still go to community college, yet you don't know the facts that they, the problems they struggle with while Objection. they're there. I don't know Leading the problems question. they struggle with because oh, that's wait, wait, for wait. the Board of Governors. That's not for the Leading Board of Leading question, objection. His question was, which question? The one where he was basically trying to get an answer off of the question. So the question, so question. It was the leading question. Did you tell her the answer in the question? Did, he, did the question state the answer? Yes. I, which, I just, You're his last question. question. What was, yeah. can yes, you restate the question? Asked. Please. What are the challenges faced in community colleges with financial aid? Oh, overruled. That was not the original question, thank you. We have it on the Since you mentioned, you know, we'll just let that go <laughs> since you don't want to answer that. I answered the question. You're asking me the wrong questions that I'm not qualified to answer for. You're bringing up community colleges. Right. That's a form of higher education. Yes, it is. Now, that form of higher education is has become limited by the amount of budget cuts that are uh, being cut from the system, from community colleges, and the financial aid that is given. Okay. So, for you to know that that our community colleges are available, right? But. There are many things that hold people back. Like Objection, over leading question. You're giving her answers instead of I'm asking a question. Giving her answers. I'm yes, telling you. Yes, you are. You're stating facts when you need to be asking questions. Okay. Uh, okay, Judge, do you believe that he stated facts instead of asking questions there? Maybe in this segment. I, well, I don't, I don't want to say. Oh, God. Do you, need to, you need to either overrule the objection and allow him yeah, to I, I mean, or I don't you sustain to do. the objection and tell him to ask a question. Sustained. Can you please ask? Ring. Please. One more thing. Okay. On the threats that you mentioned, it says preserving affordability. Mm -hmm. How has that happened? How has uh, affordability been preserved? Through scholarships and financial aid. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's when. I don't know, if, Yon, I don't know if she should be mentioning that if she can't answer questions about scholarships and financial aid. You're, you're asking her, so you're asking her how they are helping or what? Yes. You're asking me questions about financial aid as well, right? Yes. Are you qualified to answer those questions from an expert's point of view? Can you answer those questions from an expert's point of view? I'm a lawyer. I'm okay, asking. neither can I. I'm on the UC Regents Board. So I, cov I, I govern I, committees that do not involve I, financial aid. So you're ask that that's basically <laughs> me asking you questions like she, that. You're, you're, you asked your question about community college, right? Yes. She's a UC. She's more, her expertise are in UC college, right, not. See. When she mentioned community college, what was that about then? If she uh, did you I, ask her a question about community college, I did. and she I could object it in saying it's incompetent anyway because she's not qualified as a witness. I could have objected to any of your past questions about community college, but I decided not to because okay. she already told you she wasn't qualified. She brought up the term, um, the uh, topic community colleges. Your so paper brings up higher education. Is community college is not a form of higher education? You, are, you specialize in higher education. You are the you manage the board. I specialize in UCs. I don't specialize. Is that not a form of higher education? Is community yeah. college is not a form of higher education? Why are you well, ask, answering my question with questions? Jesus, stop. Yeah. 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 Just stop. Just stop. They're not just stop. How many objections can I make that are sustained before he has to sit down? That's up to the there judge. is a certain amount, but I mean, it depends how. Is it 10? So, I think, I think you're done. I'm done? Yeah, you're, you're dismissed, right? Yes. If they want to follow up. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys can follow up if you want. Like to reexamine the witness. Okay. So throughout this, um, as the UC Regents um, leader, would can you please restate some of the um, opportunities that you see as the leader of UC Regents? UCs accept scholarships. They accept financial aid. 
and anyone can apply for a scholarship and anyone can apply for financial aid. And for other school, or, so you, or, do you believe that the UCs are offering everyone a chance at higher education? Yes, if they want to attend a UC, they'll take the, they'll take the steps to attend the UC. Can you please reread part of the California Master Plan that you read earlier? UC was to select from among the top one eighth, 12.5 percent of the high school graduating class. CSU was to select from among the top one third, 33.3 percent of the high school graduating class. And the California California Community Colleges were to admit any student capable of benefiting from instruction. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're dismissed. Defense, would you like to bring up an, your next witness, please? Uh, Jared Brown. Jared Brown. Right, who are we calling? Jerry Brown. Governor Jerry Brown. Okay. You swear to tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you, rubber fool. All right, get order in this court, please. Uh, order, please. No side conversations. Thank you. Please state your name. Edmund Brown. What is your current occupation right now? Governor of California. Being the governor of California, what is your job in education? Uh, my job is to, being the governor, my job is to oversee the state of California, submit the budget, and pass, not pass, but um, propose laws. And so pertaining to education, I do allocate, I do propose the budget which allocates money towards education in California. Do you believe that there is sufficient access to higher education in California? Yes, I do believe there is sufficient access to higher education in California. I say this because we have a multitude of schools not, that are not only state funded, but there are private schools as well. What do you think is the spirit of the American dream? The spirit of the American dream is, let's see, the spirit of the American dream is a place where everyone has the opportunity to do their best by their ability. And I'm paraphrasing on the uh, Trump, James Truslow Adam quote. Okay. How does the California Master Plan ensure opportunity for each according to the ability or achievement? California Master Plan, it states that, there, that we have three tiers which we have heard a lot about, the UC system, the CSU system, and then the junior college and community, uh, community, community college system. The UC system takes the top 9% of each graduating class, and the CSU system takes the top 12.9%, and the community college takes, quote, anyone who can benefit from the classes. Oh, what can those who are not included in 12.9% seek for higher education? They can either seek community college education, or they can seek a trade school, they can seek a for-profit education, uh, they can also seek any other private university. We, we aren't, they are not limited to uh, publicly funded universities. How do you contribute directly to the California schools? I, I allocate the budget and I propose laws such as Prop 30, which I proposed earlier this year that will raise over six million dollars for our community college system and if Prop 30 passes it will tax higher income Californians and will allow community colleges to have more than over 12,000 more students be enrolled. Okay. How does proposing this budget help our schools? Getting money, what, are those, what is that money doing for schools? That money is going to pay. It is is going to pay off um, debts that the California education system has, such as 
um, IOUs that we have given out for teachers when we haven't had enough money. Okay, I'd like to present evidence. Hi. Do you recognize these persons? Yes, that is the director um, of the Jet Propulsion Lab, um, funded by NASA at Caltech University. So you're saying Caltech and NASA are working together on a joint project to further research? Yes, they are. What other companies are working like that in California? Um, like that, in uh, Silicon Valley, Stanford is working with Apple, among other companies, to do a lot of research in that field. So these two examples show that California schools are, California universities are in fact very good and so good in fact that they are working with big name companies and industries such as NASA and Apple. I'd like to bring evidence I. Could you please read the student to teacher ratio? In California, the teacher to student ratio is 20.9 to 1, and that is ranked 49th in the state, or in the, not the state, in the country. Oh, why do you think we are ranked so low? We're ranked so low because lately, in this economic recession, we have not had as much money that we, we haven't had as much money overall in our budget. And so we have had to take, we have had to take cuts everywhere, including in education. And so instead of just denying education to kids in certain areas, we have had to just increase the class sizes. Does Prop 30 give us more money? Yes, more Prop school. 30 will allow us to hire more teachers and lower the student to teacher ratio. Could you please read this right here? From the California Master Plan. This is not from the California Master Plan, but this. Okay. Okay. Prop. If Proposition 30 passes, community colleges would receive 210 million dollars in additional funds in 2013, to, in 2012 to 2013. Most of that money would be used to make good on deferred funding commitments by the state to colleges, but passage of the measure would make room for an additional 20,000 students. If Proposition 30 fails, community colleges would be cut by another $338 million in the middle of the academic year, which translates into 180,000 fewer students. Colleges would be forced to slash course offerings even further, lay off more educators, and borrow more. These cuts would also occur if Proposition 38 passes and receives more votes than Proposition 30. Thank you. Thank you. We're pretty close on time. I think we should just stop here. Do you want to cross-examine now? Or wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ready to go. So please, bring up your second witness, and then prosecution cross-examine if you want to. Yes. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, mustaches. I do. I really can't lie. The love mustache. Yeah, see? Whenever you are. Oh, okay, that's okay. Okay, um, can you tell me what exactly is your duty as the governor of California? My duty as the, gover the governor of California is to oversee the operations of California, propose the budget, and draft legislation. Who is in charge of making bu budget cuts in the state? Um, can you talk about the recent budget cuts that you've made? The recent budget cuts that I've made have not just been to education. There have been budget cuts all around because we have just had not enough money. Now, as I talked about before, if Proposition 30 passes, we will have a lot, we will have much more money to be able to allocate towards education. What happens if it fails? If it fails, then we will have to make more cuts. 
Um, can, you, can you explain to me what Prop 30 actually is? Prop 30 raises the taxes on the richer people. Uh, okay, can you tell me how much money you cut exactly from CSU and UC colleges? I do not have the exact figure. Would you like to know exactly how much money you cut from them? Nice and loud, okay. Would you like to know exactly how much money you cut from community college? I mean, from colleges and UC CSU system? You cut $250 million from CSUs and $250 million to uh, UC schools. Um, why did you make those budget cuts? Because there wasn't enough money to go around. What did you want the financial outcome to be of those budget cuts? Well, the financial outcome is, let's see. The financial outcome isn't a good one, obviously. Budget cuts aren't a good thing, but when there's not enough money, there's not enough money. We can't just print more money. Um, can you tag? Can you tell me exactly how much money you cut from community colleges? No, I cannot. Would you like to know how much money you cut from community colleges? If you would like to, if you would like to present the evidence. Yeah. You cut eight hundred, eight hundred and nine million dollars from community colleges, and there's hundred and twelve in the state. California. That's a lot of money. Um, why did you make those budget cuts? Like I said, there was not enough money to go around. Are you aware that because of your budget cuts, prices have rise in colleges? Yes, I am aware. Do you believe that raising prices on colleges makes it more accessible for students? It does not make it more accessible for students, but there are more colleges than just public colleges. That's fair. Um, Are you planning on making cuts in the Cal Grant program? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I'm going to give you a paperwork says so exactly some evidence of mine. Can I have the, which one? That one. Um, You are just senior. Uh, it's in that part of it. Okay. Uh, um, how do you expect? Okay, so okay, it's like an evidence. Okay. Can you go back and make sure that we actually get that? Yeah. Read aloud. If you're saying yeah. that he's yeah. making questions, can you ask oh, can have the governor to read it if you're presenting the evidence to him? It's evidence about him. Cal grants will be on the chopping block with or without the tax increase according to the governor's to budget plan. So you're cutting out. What website is this from? So you can't find it on the discovery page? It's on your discovery page. On ours? Yes. It's called uh, high Inside Higher Education. Okay, um, how do you expect kids who can't afford to go who can't afford to go to college get money I mean, to go to college, get, get support. Well, if you consider that the American dream is according to ability, then they can maybe try and go out and get a job to raise money themselves. If they have the ability to do that, then they can achieve their own American dream according to their ability. Uh, one qualifications you need to enter a community college? 
I believe you have to have graduated high school or have a GED. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. okay. Um, are you aware of how many students drop out of high school because of uh, economically disadvantaged situations? Seventeen point seven percent, and that is fifty-five thousand four hundred eighty-six students, I believe. Would you say that the amount of socially, dis I mean, the the amount of economically disadvantaged people are a, diver a diverse type of people? Like they vary from different races or situations. I do not have the data. Um, are you? aware of the population of a UC school such as UC Berkeley? Aware in what way? Of their enrollment. Here's a piece of evidence. I don't have to read this. Top. Make sure when you Berkeley. introduce the evidence, you say what the name of the evidence is and what it shows. Uh, that shows uh, eight of the UC system, UC schools, their enrollment and their tuition costs. Okay. Are you, what does it say on the amount of enrollment per year? The enrollment, or the acceptance rate for yeah. 2010 is 22%. 22%. Um, now, do you feel it's a state responsibility to meet the needs of the people that are economically disadvantaged, especially if it's a large number of economically disadvantaged people? Do you think it, restate the question again? Do you think it is the state's responsibility to meet the needs of a large amount of economically disadvantaged people? It is the state's responsibility to offer the best education in our ability. Now would you say, I think, again, I have to state the question, is it the state's responsibility to meet the needs of, so, of economically disadvantaged people, if, especially if they come in large amounts? If we don't have the resources to meet the needs for socially economic, so, socioeconomically disadvantaged people, then it is not our responsibility. So the people of California don't get the education because they can't meet Objection, the... leading question. Sustained. Okay, what happens to those students that can't afford it then? They can't afford it. So they don't get it? They don't get it. If California doesn't have enough money to support that, and our money comes from mostly taxpayers, this is, um, then we can't support that. This thing to the California per student spending, can you read how much is spent on each a student per year? Objection, please present the source of your evidence. Thoughts on public education. Analysis, opinion. The source, not the article name. It is uh, Silicon Valley Education Foundation. How much is spent per student a year? $8,667 when adjusted for regional cost differences. Okay, and how much is spent per inmate? This is. Uh, Legislative analysis on criminal justice. How much is spent per inmate a year? How is this relevant? It's, uh, uh, we're comparing the s amount spent on inmates compared to the amount spent on students. Are we talking about prisoners yes. in this court case? We're comparing. It's a comparison. It's a comparison. Yes. So what does it say at the bottom? What is your question? Um, irrelevant. Overruled. Overruled. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. What does it say on how many, uh, how much money is spent a year? You answer the question, please. Okay. It says it costs an average of about forty-seven thousand per year to incarcerate an inmate in prison in California. Forty-seven thousand per year. How much does it say again uh, on per student spending? Or again, the other. It says eight thousand six hundred sixty-seven, but this specifically says that this money is coming from California. This does not say where that money is coming from. So does the state of California not fund for the inmates? 
I don't. I do not have the data on who funds prisoners. As governor, you don't have the data for it. Not with me. Defense, would you like to? Defense, would you like to read the question here? Please. So let's revisit Proposition Thirty. Um, I'll present the evidence that was already presented by prosecution. Can you please read the highlighted? Or, Yes, if Proposition 30 fails. If Proposition 30 fails, community colleges would be cut by another 338 million in the middle of the academic year, which translates into 180,000 fewer students. Colleges would be forced to slash course offerings even further, lay off more educators, and borrow more. Thank you. So would you say, as governor, that this proposition is advocated by you to improve education? Yes. And so if Proposition 30 is passed, how do you feel about the improvement of education in the future. I feel that if Proposition 30 is passed, there will be more money to go around, and so therefore we can have more students be enrolled. And can I please bring forward evidence? This is from the website for NASA about um, APL, which is Jet Propulsion Laboratory from the California Institute of yes, Technology. Uh, you don't have that ready in court. Is that on your discovery page? Yes, it is. And you guys used a computer the other day, so it is ready. Thank you. As long as it's on the <laughs> Anyways, um, can you please tell us a little bit about this program and how it's associated with different schools? Well, this program is. NASA decided that they wanted to put a jet propulsion laboratory and have it in Caltech. And so, well, that means that Caltech is one of, Cal Caltech was the best school that they could find to put that in. So, well, Jackson, um, he's not qualified to answer the question on NASA, NASA's program. That's why we have evidence. Thank you. He's not qualified to answer, Judge. Overruled. Overruled, you can well, please answer. Things. Anyways, um, can you please explain what you think this proves about um, colleges in California? I think this proves that colleges in California are some of the best in the country, if not in the world. Objection, irrelevance. I don't see how we're not talking about the how well the schools are, we're talking about you know, how they're accepted or not. We're talking about higher education as a whole. Overruled. I, I'm going to have to tell you guys that if any more, I'll give you three more objections, but any more, then to shut you down. I what am I going to do? Do you want to be argumentative? Please, Keith. The judge? I mean, that works too. Okay. So, can you just tell us a little more information about this program and what Caltech does? This program, um, Let's see, I'll just read a little blurb. It says, in total, JPL has 24 spacecraft and 10 instruments conducting active missions. All of these are important parts of NASA's program of exploration of Earth, the solar system, and the universe beyond. These ventures would not be possible without NASA's deep space network managed by JPL. Thank you. Is that it? Yes. Okay, you are dismissed. Defense, please bring up your third and final witness. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like to I'm bring you emailing Ryan. <laughs>
Yarbrough. What is your occupation? The president of the California Scholarship Federation and the California Junior Scholarship Federation. What is your purpose at the California Scholarship Federation? Um, I assist individuals seeking financial aid in the process of applying for scholarships. In your expert opinion, do these resources actually help students go to college? Most definitely. Um, there are a variety of scholarship programs available for these individuals, and if they choose not to apply for scholarships, they can apply for student loans. Is there any special requirements that I need to go uh, to get a scholarship? No. Um, contrary to common thought, you don't have to be a star athlete or a valedictorian to receive a scholarship. You just have to apply for and win a scholarship, and that will help you. How are scholarships given out? They are given out. Scholarship programs give out scholarships to individuals based on characteristics such as need, interest, or race, or any category that you may identify with. You name it, there, there is a special scholarship program available, available for you. How might a student apply for a scholarship? You just asked me that question. Oh, sorry. Uh, how many scholarships are given out? There are, well first off, there are, there's over 98 different scholarship programs in the state of California. How many scholarship associations are there? Oh, you said 98. Are there only 98 scholarships now? So, there are only 98 different scholarship programs in, in California, right? Yes. That's a lot. In your expert opinion, do scholarships help students go to college? Yes, because not, ev not everyone is, has, the fi has the money to go to college, therefore scholarships are obviously helpful. What other types of uh, financial aid are there? Loans and scholarships. I'd like to present, uh, present evidence E, the LA Times. Could you read this segment? Only students in Utah, seven. Um, this is a survey that found that only students in Utah who have a loan debt of seventeen thousand two hundred and twenty-seven dollars. In Hawaii, seventeen thousand four hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars had have had the, had smaller loan totals than California. The state with the highest student loan debt is New Hampshire, with thirty-two thousand four hundred and forty dollars, and Pennsylvania, with twenty-nine thousand nine hundred and fifty-nine dollars. So, in your expert opinion, California student loans are not very high compared yeah, to all the other. The best evidence rule states that you need to present the entire evidence. That doesn't, what, where is that? Uh, the entire evidence sort of is screen? on the computer. Yeah, where, the she doesn't have excerpt. that. She doesn't have that she to read. She has an excerpt of the evidence. The entire evidence is presented. Are you going to let them argue? The best evidence see, uh, states that they need best to evidence. Answer. Yes, but as long as it's. You have the evidence. And you need to answer it when you give it. If you guys want to pull. Can I reread the so right objection? That's what I'm saying. Read it. That's not what I'm saying. Read it. Oh. <laughs> Could I reread? Uh, it, please, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's not get argumentative here. Let's please don't object to every little thing. As long as it's on the discovery page, it is evidence. If you want to pull it up, you can. But as long as they have it. So are you overruling or sustaining that objection? I am overruling. Okay. I like to reread the evidence because there are a couple distractions. <laughs> um, California has one of the lowest student loan debt with Utah and Hawaii running behind being the only states who have a smaller loan debt than California at $17,227 and Hawaii at $17,447. The highest, the states with the highest student loan debt are Pennsylvania and New Hampshire with their student loan debt at $32,440 in New Hampshire and with Pennsylvania, $29,959. Thank you. You talked about scholarships earlier, right? Yes. How do scholarships and loans differ? Scholarships 
you do not have to pay back, whereas loans, you do have to pay back. And many people think that to go to college in California, you, have, you end up with a lot of student loan debt, when really California has one of the lowest student loan average debt in the nation, with only 51% of students obtaining loan debt after they graduate in both public and private colleges. How many people in the state of California are currently going to college? California has the largest post-secondary education system in the nation, with over 2.5 million individuals attending colleges in more than 100 states across the, the, the with more than 100, okay. California has one of the largest post-secondary education systems in the nation, with 2.5 million individuals attending more than 100 different colleges across the state. Are you familiar with Prop 30? Yes, I am. Uh, I'd like to present evidence F, but I'm pretty sure the court knows what Prop 30 is. I could go over it. Um, Prop 30 is a proposition supported by our Governor Jerry Brown, and if passed, it would provide an additional $210 million to the community colleges and UC and CSU schools, and allow an additional 18,000 more students to attend colleges in California. In your expert opinion, do you believe in Prop 30? Yes, I do. If passed, it would, it would greatly benefit California's college systems financially. Can undocumented students obtain higher education? They most certainly can. Um, there is a policy called the AB 540, which is California law policy that allows these undocumented students to go to college as long as they meet the criteria of that policy. I'd like to present uh, evidence G. Please read uh, what this report was. Yeah. It, it, it was on the persecution discovery page. Just the first paragraph, please. Okay. Um, AB 540 represents a considerable cost savings to qualified undocumented students and their families. For example, in 2009 through 2010, the total average annual in state fees for undergraduate full time students at the University of California is $9,285. This compares to $32,000. Zero thirty-two thousand dollars for non-resident students at California State University. Undergraduate resident students pay four thousand to four thousand twenty-six dollars per year versus eleven thousand one sixty dollars for non-resident students. At the California Community Colleges, the annual residential fee is minimally four hundred eighty dollars compared to three thousand three hundred sixty dollars for non-resident. To qualify as an AB five hundred student, five forty student. Undocumented resident students must have attended a California high school for three or more academic years, have or will graduate a California high school, register or be enrolled at an accredited institution of public higher education, file or plan to file an affidavit, and hold and not hold a valid non-immigrant visa. Uh, I'd like to present evidence G from the NILC.org. Could you please read me the demographics of this graph? This is irrelevant. Wait. This, this is the wrong... This is relevant, but this is not... Okay, just like that. Um... There was a total of 2,019 undocumented students applying for colleges in the state of California. But if you, like I mentioned in the AB 540, if you do not meet the criteria in the AB 540, all hope is not lost. You can still go to college, but you will not receive funding. And as long as you, as long as you meet the criteria for that individual college, you can still attend that college 
if you do not qualify for the AB 540. So technically, undocumented immigrants can still go to college in the state of California. In your expert opinion, do you think California college education system is valuable? Most certainly, because we wouldn't have as many skilled nurses, emergency technicians, law enforcement personnel, or other skilled people protecting our communities. Um, so yes, I do think it's valuable, and if it weren't, we wouldn't have as many individuals attending colleges across the state to begin with. Do you believe California provides sufficient access to higher education? Yes, I do, because any person who Can you ask the question again? Do you believe California provides sufficient access to higher education? Yes, I do. Because California provides access to higher education no matter race, gender, disabil disability present, you can still attend college with scholarships or loans or other assist assistance. You can still attend a higher education college. Thank you. Yeah. Prosecution, would you like to cross examine? Can you explain again what the California Scholarship Federation is? Um, it is a federation that assists, assists students seeking financial aid. Um, how does someone pretty become subtle. a? Oh, it's pretty obvious. How does someone become a member of the California Scholarship Federation? How is that re how is that relevant to higher education? This is about the students applying for scholarships, not who is a part of the federation. Judge, if you'd like. You Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you ask the question? How does someone become a member of the California Squash Federation? Um, I do not have that information. Would you like to tell me? Um, well, do so now that Emily has it. Objection, best evidence. Sustained. It was on your it was on your own discovery page. Well, if you're going to present it, you should have the evidence. What if I'm incorrect? Would do you have any evidence? Oh yeah. There was an objection. So yeah, I, I I did. It says sustained. Okay. okay, so then direct the lawyer to ask a question. So lawyer, please. Ask. Okay. Um, how is your federation an efficient way to provide equal opportunities to everyone in California? We cater to the needs for any type of individual, whether undocumented, physical disabilities. We help every person who comes to us seeking financial assistance to better themselves themselves with higher education. Um, okay, do you have evidence to, that shows how many students receive uh, scholarships? Over 80% of individuals who apply to college apply for scholarships and financial aid because it is it, it is pretty expensive, so why not? But how many of them receive them? Do we have evidence? No. Do you have evidence to show how many undocumented workers get accepted to college? Um, yes, I do. One thousand four hundred and twenty one undocumented. Oh, wait. Um, well, two thousand nineteen. Okay. Can I see that? Oh, wait, never mind. Can you scratch that? That never mind. Okay. Um, do you have evidence to show uh, what the qualifications are for an undocumented worker to apply for? Yes. 
I stated that previously, but I can restate yes. it again. Um, you will have had to attend a California high school for three or more ac academic years. Um, have or will graduate from a California high school or have attained a GED. Register or be currently enrolled in a, at an accredited institution of public higher education in California. File in a fit of it and not hold a valid non-immigrant visa. Okay. Um, what happens to the kids, uh, undocumented workers that don't have social security numbers? Um, they can apply for that, and that also ties to them being ineligible, in, in, ineligible, not being qualified to be a part of the AB 540. And like I said, they can still go to college as long as they are as long as they meet the criteria for that college and are accepted, they can still go. But they will not be given financial assistance. But it's still possible. No further questions. Thank you. No. Defense, would you like to re-question or examine your witness? No. Oh, witness here dismissed. Okay. So what, are, what point are we at right now? Closing Okay, do you want to give them five minutes or do you want this to happen right now? What's your call? What do you mean? You can five minutes to anything from a oh, short recess, or do you yeah. want to happen right now? Yeah. Tell them. All right. Tell them. Court is in recess for five minutes. Can we revisit? This court is now in session. Defense, do you rest your case? No, we like to call Richard Wong to the stand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you swear to tell the truth? The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you, Larry Rosenstock. I do. Okay. Well, we'd like to submit a piece of evidence from the California Master Plan. All right. Can you please read this segment right here? The goal was that UC and CSU would enroll at least one community college transfer student for each two freshmen enrolled. All eligible California Community College transfer students are to, be, are to be provided a place in the upper division and are to be given priority over freshmen in the admissions process. So in your opinion, what is the ultimate goal of the master plan? To ensure that everyone has some form of higher education. What extra steps have the Regents Board taken with the master plan to give everyone a UC opportunity? Um, well, exactly what I read. Um, we have tried to make it a goal throughout the UC and CSU systems that for every two admitted freshmen, there's at least one community, there's, there's at least one community college transfer. And they have priority over the freshmen in admissions process. How can one become <laughs> eligible to transfer? Um, you have to confirm that you are in community college, that you are in the junior division or the lower division or you are a junior or a lower division applicant in order to transfer to a UC from community college. In your expert's opinion, with enough effort, can one easily get out, become eligible to go to a UC school? Yes, it's, um, it's almost guaranteed that if you are eligible to transfer from a lower division or a junior division from community college, that you are guaranteed a place within a University of California. Thank you. Prosecution, would you like to cross-examine? Yes. <laughs> you just said it. Well, what you read off the paper is that the students who are eligible for transfer. Now, what are the requirements to be eligible? I mean, what, yeah, what do you mean to be eligible? You need to be of the junior or lower division in community college. You need to have a minimum of a 3.0 GPA within community college. And if you have a certain major, you have to take certain courses in order to transfer. And does the prosecution have evidence of how many people have transferred successfully? The prosecution or the defense? I mean the defense. Um. Last question. Yesterday you stated that you are not qualified to answer enrollment questions. Right. So what makes you eligible to answer this one? Because it's an enrollment into a UC and not a community college or CSU. Yeah, you, when I asked you yesterday, you said you didn't specialize in the department that enrolls. So 
how in the UC system, you said you didn't qualify for the position, for the committees that uh, enroll students. What makes you qualify to answer this question today? Can you reiterate the question you asked me yesterday about that subject? I don't remember. Yesterday, you told me that you weren't qualified to answer questions on the Department of Enrollment. I said I wasn't qualified to answer questions about financial aid and how what students can afford community college. And which students can enroll in the, in the schools. Objection, lack of foundation. Yesterday you were talking about community colleges, not UCs. She's answering questions about the enrollment of UCs. Yesterday we were speaking about UCs and community colleges. Yes, and she okay. earlier admitted that she was not yeah. qualified to answer community okay. colleges. Sustain, that's good. Let's move on, please. Okay. Just ask the question. Um, prosecution is open to questions. You are dismissed. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like to re question your witness? You are dismissed. Thank you. Uh, defense, do you rest? Yes. What comes next?